You find that your Roush truck creates this battery every day. When it's off, do you find that it makes this noise? In this video, we're gonna show you guys what's the cause and how to fix it. Hey guys, how do we keep it dirty off-road? And in today's video, we're gonna address a very common problem with Roush supercharged trucks that we've been dealing with for the last couple of months. And that is the water pump staying on for hours on end after we turn off the truck and killing our batteries. Now we've been dealing with this problem for a while now, but when it first presented itself, it came up as just the battery would die after the truck sat for a day. Wait, what do you mean it's dead? What do I mean? The bat I mean the battery's dead. We the battery's dead. The problem was so bad, we ended up getting one of these. It, it was happening so much that I ended up using these, and kind of surprising, guys. Good for two jumps. Now, at first, I figured my battery was going out. We tested that; it ended up being fine. But we did have to figure out what was staying on, what was killing the battery. We couldn't figure it out for the longest time until Bailey and Hannah Racing Design noticed that our water pump was always on. This right here is the water pump for the supercharger. Basically, the Roush supercharger kit is four components. You got the supercharger at the top of the engine, you got your intercooler, you got your pump, and you got your reservoir. This water pump right here works a lot like a turbo timer in that it stays on after the truck turns off for about five minutes or so to keep everything cool. Problem is, I've never had this thing actually warm up to the point that I needed it to stay on after the end and was off. We've done quite a bit of runs with this truck and even after running her pretty freaking hard and running the supercharger, I rarely ever got to the point where this was even hot to the touch. Having it stay on wasn't really necessary in my book, at least not based on my experience. At first we had no clue what the cause was. We looked at the installation manual, couldn't find anything there. So we set out the call, put out the call on the social media to have our followers, maybe some of our more mechanic friendly guys to give us some advice and let us know what should we be looking at, what should we check for, because we were not having any luck on the forums or any of our web searches, and there was no details on how to fix this. You guys hear that? And that's the Roush water pump that's still on 20 minutes after I turn this thing off. So this pump right here stays on anytime you unlock the truck. If you turn it on, it'll stay on for a couple minutes, but it's been on for the last 20 minutes and it's killing my battery. Down there somewhere, if you guys could see that, there is a fuse and a relay. We've replaced that fuse and relay and it's still on for 20 minutes at a time. And because of where everything is, it's hard to trace what circuit it actually taps into because it looks like it actually taps into one of these wire harnesses. So you gen guys with the Roush truck, how the hell do I get this thing to start working correctly? Do you, do you guys know what it's tied into? I looked at the install instructions, couldn't find any details. So looking for help guys, how the hell do I keep that from staying on 30 minutes at a time and killing my battery? Now, as far as what's causing it, it could be one of two things. It can either be the relay that is used to turn on the pump or the circuit that's being tapped. From an electrical standpoint, this pump is wired to a relay and then that relay is wired to a capacitor circuit. That radio capacitor circuit is at the top of the engine. A lot of you guys may know it. This is what keeps the sound system from buzzing. If you guys have ever installed an aftermarket stereo, you know what I'm talking about. Install it and it starts buzzing. Four trucks have a capacitor built into the engine so that buzzing noise doesn't ever make it into the cab speakers. This right here, that little connector you see right there at the top of the engine, not this one, but that one over there. The way Roush does it is they tap into it with this little connector. They actually have this little jumper right here. They do a Y connector to connect into that. And it's kind of an ingenious way of doing it, right? Because they do a Y connector so that there's no added circuits or anything. And it's a much cleaner install. Problem is, as these trucks start getting older, for whatever reason, that capacitor circuit always stays on. And if that's always on, it's never switching off the water pump. And the water pump stays on all the time, killing your battery. Now, we don't know why that capacitor over time decides to stay on all the time. We just know that this is a very common occurrence and it happens to a lot of trucks. Now, to fix this issue, first, we're going to want to make sure that your relay is working correctly. And to do that, you want to disconnect the connection there, the Y connection that you're getting, and tap it directly to your battery and make sure that your pump turns on and off with the actual positive connection of the battery to make sure that your relay is functioning correctly. And just to make sure this is the line, we stripped it really quick and... Yep, as soon as I connect it. This right here is the white connector that they normally use. So you just want to make sure you tap in on one of those connections. I think it's this one right here. Route that to your battery and confirm your relay by 
using a battery to turn it on and off and make sure your pump is running. Now, depending on your truck, the relay could be in multiple locations. Ours was way down there. It was like really a pain in the butt to find. So we ended up relocating ours to the front. So this is our relay location now. Moving it there so that it's a little bit easier to service. So replacing the relay, you can get these from any local auto parts store or on Amazon. If you guys look, it'll have the specs right at the top of the relay. Just make sure you get a relay that matches exactly the specs on there so that you can just do a drop fit. If the pump turns on the way it's supposed to, then you know it's the capacitor circuit up there and you're gonna need to reroute it to the fuse box with an outer circuit. There's a bunch of fuses that you can use, but basically all of the ones right here on the right hand side, all of these right here, these are all key switch. We actually went through and checked them all. Now, as far as the fuses go, those right there are what they call mini ATL fuses. It has this shape right here. Now you can't just get a mini ATL fuse tap because this ATL tap will not fit in there. And let me show you guys. It won't go in correctly. It won't go in all the way down. The sides of the fuse box right here block it from going down. And because it has a larger body, these won't actually work. So when you do this, you have to get an ATO fuse tap. See how the difference? This is an ATL fuse tap. That's a mini ATL fuse tap. This is an ATL fuse tap. It's the same spacing and everything. Even though these are mini ATL fuses, this is what you need to use in order to tap in. And the best way to do that is just go ahead and uh, remove the Y connector. Make sure your circuit is connected back up correctly there. Cut the cable, rerun it. Make sure that it follows the wiring loom and tap into that key switch circuit. And then finally, make sure you turn on the key and validate that your pump turns on and off only with the key of the truck. Go ahead, Ethan. It's on. So we confirmed it's on. You can feel it on. Water's moving. Turn it off, Christian. And it's off. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Now that you have this wire to the key and it turns off right after you turn off the truck, are you going to damage your supercharger? And no, it's not. Because for me, there's two reasons why. I've rarely ever got this to the point that it was hot. I was able to always touch it and it was never hot even after some very spitter. It really did drive it. That also being said, as a common practice, I don't just turn my truck off after an off-road session or after any spirited driving. As a general rule, you should leave your truck on for a minimum of five to 10 minutes after a major off-road run or an off-road section or something like that because if the truck is not running there's nothing cooling off your transmission there's nothing cooling off your supercharger there's nothing cooling off the engine if it just sits there you can have problems so as a best practice you should always let your truck run for a minimum of five to ten minutes after you do any runs to let it cool off all those components because again there's nothing cooling off your transmission if the engine is not running so you got to make sure you do it yourself all right guys that's it for this video questions or comments below Please consider subscribing and we'll see you guys on the next one.